Imagine something as small and ordinary as salt carrying spiritual weight. Yes, salt. This simple crystal is in every kitchen on every dining table, but could it hold secrets that go beyond seasoning our meals? Assalamu alaikum, dears brothers and sisters. Today, we're diving deep into an overlooked but fascinating topic, the hidden power of salt in Islam. Many Muslims believe salt isn't just for taste. It's a purifier, a protector, a subtle force with spiritual benefits. What's behind this belief, and how does it fit into our faith? Let's uncover how something so common may hold a profound role in safeguarding our homes and souls in ways you may have never considered. Salt has always been an intriguing part of human life, one of those humble but essential elements present in every household, used daily, yet often overlooked for its deeper meaning. In Islamic tradition, salt takes on unique significance beyond its culinary uses. The simple crystal isn't just a seasoning, but is thought to carry qualities that bridge the gap between the physical and spiritual realms. Salt has been respected throughout history as a purifying agent, capable of neutralizing negative energies and providing a sense of protection to spaces where it is placed. So why does this everyday item carry such spiritual weight? Its symbolism stretches beyond its tangible form and into a realm where the natural world reflects the divine order. Islam teaches us to reflect on the signs of Allah in creation, to see the purpose and design in even the smallest things, and salt is no exception. By examining salt with a spiritual lens, we discover how such a basic element might play a significant role in practices that seek to honor and connect with the Creator. Salt, though simple, is considered powerful in removing impurities, not only from food but also from spaces and sometimes even people. Purification is central to Islamic teachings, where physical and spiritual cleanliness are closely intertwined. From the practices of wudu, ablution, to keeping our homes tidy, Islam places immense importance on cleanliness as a way of respecting Allah's creation and as a means of protecting our souls. In the case of salt, many Muslims believe it has natural purifying qualities that align with the principles of cleanliness in Islam. Placing salt in certain areas of the home, for example, is thought to repel negative energy or influences creating a safer, spiritually sound space. In a similar way, some households keep small salt bowls in corners or near entry points as a subtle gesture to maintain a sense of peace and purity within the home. The idea is not one of superstition, but rather an appreciation for the natural elements that Allah has created and a recognition of their symbolic power. It reflects a way of living that combines faith with daily practice where even something as small as salt reminds us of Allah's wisdom and the blessings within His creation. The use of salt as a purifier, therefore, is not merely symbolic but an expression of faith in the unseen, a way to honor the presence of the divine in the natural world around us. Islam emphasizes spiritual cleanliness, not only for ourselves but also for the spaces we inhabit. By using salt with the intention of cleansing and protecting, Muslims engage in a subtle yet profound practice that acknowledges Allah's mercy in granting us simple tools for both physical and spiritual well-being. In the vast world of prophetic medicine, which encompasses natural remedies and holistic practices rooted in the teachings and actions of Prophet Muhammad, salt finds a distinct yet understated place. When we talk about healing in Islam, it's more than just physical well-being. It's about achieving harmony between body, mind, and soul, all in alignment with Allah's guidance. Salt, while not a prominent element in prophetic medicine, carries a symbolic weight and sometimes finds its way into traditional remedies and practices that Muslims have embraced through generations. When used thoughtfully, salt is believed to hold cleansing, soothing, and protective properties, elements that are highly valued in maintaining both personal and environmental balance. The Prophet Muhammad encouraged believers to seek healing through the natural resources Allah has provided, to rely on prayer, and to trust in Allah's wisdom. This approach towards natural elements like salt shows a beautiful harmony between the material and spiritual realms, as it reflects how our faith encourages us to seek purity and protection 
in ways that resonate with our daily lives. In some narrations and folk practices, salt was used to clean wounds, purify food, and even ward off ailments. While these practices often vary by region, they highlight a common belief that salt could help cleanse not only the body, but also the spirit. It was common in some households to dissolve salt in water and sprinkle it in specific areas to purify the home, especially after difficult or trying events, as a way to symbolically wash away negativity. And while these practices are not explicitly detailed in Islamic texts, they find support within the broader context of Islamic values around cleanliness, purification, and protection. The use of salt in such ways is always meant to be coupled with trust in Allah and understanding that true protection and healing come from Him alone. Muslims have long held that while natural elements can serve as tools, they are merely means through which Allah's will is realized. This mindset elevates salt from an ordinary household item to a small reminder of faith and trust in the one who created everything. Salt's potential as a protector in traditional remedies is often associated with rukya, or the practice of spiritual healing through Quranic verses and prayers. Some Muslims include salt when performing rukya on spaces or homes, adding it to water or placing it in specific areas while reciting verses for protection. Again, the aim is not to elevate salt as a cure-all, but to respect it as a natural creation of Allah that can assist us in seeking spiritual well-being. This is about intention. Using salt with the belief that Allah alone is the true source of healing and protection helps to create a mindset rooted in faith without falling into superstition. Salt, in this sense, becomes a humble aid in our efforts to guard our homes and hearts from negative influences reminding us of our reliance on Allah's protection. As Muslims, we are taught to approach everything with balance and mindfulness, to use what Allah has provided while placing full trust in Him. In the world of prophetic medicine, salt is one of those simple tools that, when used with sincerity and respect, serves as a testament to our connection to both the material and spiritual world that Allah has placed around us. In Islamic spiritual practices, protection is a deeply rooted concept that many Muslims integrate into their daily lives. It's about creating an environment where the blessings of Allah can thrive and where negative influences are minimized. Salt, though simple, often plays a role in these protective practices, particularly when combined with the powerful recitations and intentions found in Rukya. Rukya, the practice of reciting Quranic verses for healing and protection is an established part of Islamic spirituality, helping Muslims shield themselves and their homes from harmful energies or unseen forces. Some Muslims incorporate salt into these rituals by dissolving it in water, reciting specific verses over it, and then using that water to cleanse spaces or sprinkle around the home. The purpose is not to grant salt magical powers, but to use it as a symbolic tool that aids in our spiritual intentions. Just as we might use certain natural elements for healing or cleansing, salt becomes a partner in our spiritual practices, reflecting our faith in Allah as the ultimate source of protection and well-being. Salt's usage in these protective practices is grounded in the understanding that Allah is the only one who can truly protect us. The inclusion of salt, coupled with Quranic verses, serves as a reminder of this reliance on Allah while adding a tangible element to the practice. This makes the process feel more accessible and real, something we can hold and see, connecting the intangible nature of faith with something as real and immediate as salt. Reciting Ayat al-Kursi, the last two verses of Surah al-Baqarah, or other protective verses over the salt water and then sprinkling it around the home, can create a calm, and spiritually fortified environment. By doing so, we're reminded that everything in creation, even something as small as a grain of salt, is part of Allah's vast design and can play a role in the care and protection of our souls. It's a way of grounding ourselves in faith and physically enacting our belief in Allah's mercy and power, making the invisible acts of protection visible through a simple, everyday substance. Salt's role in these practices emphasizes that in Islam, 
protection isn't just about rituals, but also about intention, sincerity, and faith. When Muslims use salt as part of ruqya, it's not out of superstition, but as a means to amplify the sincerity of their prayers. It's about approaching Allah humbly, seeking His help to purify the space and fill it with blessings. This approach aligns with Islam's teachings on tawakkul, or reliance on Allah, where we use what is available to us, but place our trust solely in Him. The salt, therefore, becomes a reflection of our intention, an object that draws us closer to Allah's protection by reminding us of His encompassing power over all things, seen and unseen. And when used in this way, salt isn't just salt. It becomes a symbol of our connection to the Creator. A simple yet profound reminder that He has given us tools within His creation to live peacefully and spiritually aware. This method of using salt encourages a mindfulness that goes beyond routine, inviting us to remember Allah with every small act, even in the protection of our homes and hearts. While the Quran doesn't explicitly mention salt as a significant spiritual element, it does mention the sea and its qualities, hinting at deeper symbolism embedded in the natural world. When Allah speaks of the sea in the Quran, it's often described as a place of salt and fresh water meeting, each with its own unique characteristics. The mingling of these waters without blending reflects the divine balance in creation, where each element holds its purpose and place in Allah's design. For many Muslims, salt embodies this idea of separation, purity, and strength, representing the spiritual armor that can shield us from negativity and help maintain balance in our lives. This powerful visual in the Quran of the salt sea divided from fresh waters can be seen as a metaphor for spiritual boundaries, an invitation to reflect on the natural world and recognize how Allah has designed even the smallest details with wisdom and purpose. Salt, as part of this imagery, invites us to consider its purpose not only as a seasoning for food, but as something that adds strength and purity to our spiritual practices. It's a reminder that the divine can be found in all things, from the vastness of the oceans to the smallest grain of salt. By reflecting on the Quranic references to nature, we can develop a greater understanding of how everything in creation serves Allah's purpose, whether we notice it or not. Salt, as part of this greater design, teaches us resilience, purification, and the power to maintain boundaries, qualities that are essential in our spiritual lives. Just as salt water and fresh water coexist yet remain distinct, we too are encouraged to exist in this world with the awareness of our spiritual values and boundaries. Salt symbolizes that steadfastness, that ability to remain true to our beliefs while navigating the challenges of daily life. It's a small yet profound way of remembering that just as Allah has set physical boundaries in nature, we too can set spiritual boundaries that protect our hearts, our homes, and our connection to Allah. This is where the idea of salt as a protector takes on a symbolic meaning. It is not that salt has mystical power, but rather it is a tool to help us remember and respect the structure Allah has placed in creation. In this light, salt serves as a reminder of the beauty in divine order and a call to honor those natural balances in our spiritual practices. Moreover, by acknowledging salt as part of Allah's creation, Muslims are reminded of their responsibility to treat all elements of nature with respect and gratitude. The act of using salt in a spiritual sense can become a form of dhikr or remembrance of Allah by treating something so simple with reverence and awareness. When we use salt in our homes or as a symbol of purity and protection, it's a way of engaging with the world around us while recognizing its creator. The Quran frequently calls on us to observe and reflect on the signs of Allah in creation, from the skies to the seas, and salt offers an intimate way to do that within our own homes. It's as if every grain of salt becomes a reminder of Allah's wisdom, a tiny sign that there is depth and purpose in everything He has created. This connection between salt and the divine reflects a lifestyle where even the smallest actions, placing salt near our doorways, using it in our meals with gratitude, or including it in our spiritual practices, serve to deepen our awareness of Allah's presence. 
Salt's role as a symbol of strength, purity, and divine balance encourages us to live mindfully, rooted in the understanding that every aspect of creation points us back to Allah. When we reflect on salt and its properties through the lens of the Quran, it serves as a reminder that protection, boundaries, and purity are not just concepts, but practical aspects of a spiritually mindful life. We are invited to see these qualities in ourselves, to live with the purity and resilience that salt represents, and to remember that everything, no matter how small, is part of Allah's grand design. This understanding enriches our faith, reminding us that our lives are intertwined with the natural world, which serves as a constant testament to Allah's mercy and wisdom. By connecting with something as simple as salt, we are not only honoring a creation of Allah, but also drawing closer to Him. Inspired by the knowledge that even the smallest elements have a place in His perfect design. In using salt for spiritual purposes, it's essential to approach it with the right mindset, grounded in faith and respect. Islam emphasizes the importance of intention in all actions, big or small and using salt as a purifier or protector should be no different. It's not about attributing special powers to salt itself, as that could veer into superstition, but rather about recognizing salt as a simple tool Allah has placed in this world with unique properties. When we use salt in our daily routines or spiritual practices, we do so with the understanding that our ultimate trust lies in Allah, not in any object or ritual. Salt like so many other elements in nature, serves as a gentle reminder of the blessings Allah has provided us with, encouraging us to appreciate and utilize them in ways that align with our faith. It's about staying mindful, recognizing that our actions should always point back to Allah and that every object we use for spiritual benefit should be a means of bringing us closer to Him, not a replacement for His power. Using salt respectfully means treating it as a tool in a wider practice of purification and protection, rather than relying on it as a source of those qualities in and of itself. Muslims might place small amounts of salt around the home, perhaps near entry points or corners, with the simple intention of creating a purified, peaceful environment. But this is often accompanied by sincere supplication, remembrance of Allah, and Quranic recitation, emphasizing that it is ultimately Allah's will that grants protection and peace, not the salt itself. In this way, salt becomes a part of a mindful practice, a visual reminder of our intention to guard our hearts and homes with faith and gratitude. It's a way of grounding ourselves, using the natural elements Allah has provided to support a lifestyle of spiritual awareness. Salt, used in this way, connects us to a tradition of spiritual mindfulness where even the smallest actions and simplest objects can hold meaning when approached with intention. In Islam, we are encouraged to maintain cleanliness and spiritual purity in every aspect of life, and salt offers a beautiful and tangible way to remind ourselves of this value. A balanced approach to using salt is key. It's a tool, a small but potent symbol of purity, resilience, and protection. And when used with respect, it aligns with the values Islam encourages in our everyday lives. Whether we sprinkle salt in specific areas of our home to maintain a purified environment or use it in our meals with gratitude, we do so with the understanding that Allah has created everything for a purpose. Salt's unique qualities, from preservation to purification, can remind us of the constant blessings around us and the care Allah has placed in His creation. By using salt thoughtfully, we acknowledge the interconnectedness of all things and our role as caretakers of both our spiritual and physical worlds. Respecting salt as part of a spiritual practice also means keeping a balanced perspective, avoiding any superstitious or exaggerated beliefs about its effects. Islam teaches us to avoid actions that might lead us away from the straightforward and sincere worship of Allah. So even as we use salt with intention, we maintain a mindset that keeps Allah at the center of our focus. In this sense, using salt becomes more than just a habit. It's an intentional choice that reflects our trust in Allah's wisdom and our appreciation for the natural resources He has provided. As we incorporate salt into our routines, 
It's important to maintain this humility and awareness, making each action a form of dhikr, a reminder of Allah's presence in all things. Salt, therefore, becomes not just a tool, but a quiet companion in our journey of faith, reflecting the simplicity and beauty that come with living a life that honors Allah's creation in even the smallest ways. As we've journeyed through the significance of salt in Islamic thought, it becomes clear that this simple, unassuming substance is far more than just an everyday ingredient. In many ways, salt represents the richness of Islam's perspective on the natural world, where even the smallest, most ordinary elements carry profound meaning and purpose. In Islam, we're taught that every part of creation, down to a grain of salt, serves Allah's divine plan and holds lessons for those who reflect on it. Salt reminds us that faith is not just something we practice in specific rituals or worship, but something that permeates all areas of life, even in the smallest, most mundane details. This humble mineral, known for its ability to purify, preserve, and protect, can become a subtle yet powerful reminder of our relationship with Allah. By incorporating salt into our spiritual practices, we reaffirm our connection to the Creator and acknowledge the wisdom embedded in His creation. Islam emphasizes the importance of balance and intentionality, urging us to use natural elements like salt with care, respect, and understanding. There is a beauty in approaching our faith with this mindfulness, where each action, no matter how small, holds weight and purpose. When we use salt in our homes, as a protector, purifier, or simply as a daily reminder of Allah's blessings, it becomes an act of dhikr, or remembrance. This remembrance is more than just a verbal recitation. It's an embodied practice, a way of living that recognizes the presence of the divine in every part of our world. The use of salt, when approached with sincerity, aligns us with a way of life that honors the natural world as a sign of Allah's wisdom, guiding us toward humility and reverence. Through this humble mineral, we learn to see Allah's generosity in providing us with tools for both physical and spiritual well-being. In our fast-paced lives, where we often seek complex solutions, salt offers a return to simplicity. It reminds us that sometimes the smallest and most basic things carry immense value. In a world filled with distractions, it's easy to overlook the blessings in everyday objects. But Islam teaches us to recognize and appreciate Allah's gifts in all forms. Salt's role in purification and protection, when paired with faith, becomes more than just tradition. It's a lesson in reliance on Allah. While salt may aid in our efforts, it's ultimately Allah who protects and purifies, who brings peace and calm to our hearts and homes. This mindset guards us against superstition and ensures that our focus remains on the one who created everything. By using salt with intention, we transform it from an ordinary household item into a reminder of our dependence on Allah's mercy and guidance. Reflecting on the role of salt in Islamic teachings invites us to adopt a lifestyle that's rooted in awareness and gratitude. Each time we reach for a pinch of salt, whether it's to season food or purify a space, it can serve as a reminder to ground ourselves in faith, to center our actions around Allah's guidance. By doing so, we honor the holistic approach Islam offers, a faith that does not separate the spiritual from the material, but sees the two as interconnected. Salt becomes a symbol of this unity, representing our journey of balancing the physical and spiritual worlds with integrity, respect, and a sincere heart. It reminds us that everything, no matter how small, has a purpose in Allah's vast creation, urging us to live with intention and appreciation. The act of using salt in this way teaches us that true protection, peace, and purity come from our connection to Allah. And in that realization, even the simplest actions can draw us closer to Him. In the end, salt is a reminder that Allah has provided us with resources for both physical and spiritual protection, encouraging us to approach the world with a spirit of gratitude and mindfulness. By incorporating salt into our practices thoughtfully, we reflect our respect for Allah's creation and our reliance on His wisdom in all things. It's a gentle nudge to see the divine in the ordinary, 
to recognize that faith is not confined to places of worship, but flows through our homes, meals, and the very spaces we inhabit. Through the practice of using salt with intention, we embrace the simplicity of faith, realizing that every element in creation serves as a reminder of Allah's mercy and might. It brings us back to the essence of tawakkul, trusting in Allah alone while embracing the blessings around us. This humble practice can be a powerful way to stay connected to Allah daily, living with a heart that's always attuned to His presence, even in the smallest grains of salt. As we've seen, something as humble as salt holds so much meaning within Islam. It's a symbol of purity, resilience, and the intricate wisdom woven into Allah's creation. The beauty of faith is that even the smallest things remind us of the divine, guiding us back to Allah, strengthening our hearts, and protecting our homes. So next time you reach for that pinch of salt, remember, it's more than just seasoning. It's a subtle yet powerful link to your faith, a gentle reminder of Allah's mercy and the protection He offers through His creation. Jazakum Allah care for watching. May Allah grant you peace and blessings. And may you always find the signs of His presence in every corner of your life. If you found this inspiring, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.